Uh, so this is story time on how I end up pregnant and a mother at 12. So now fast forward to November. I'm getting thick. And y'all, when I say I'm getting thick, like my boobs are growing bigger than what it is. My butt is growing bigger than what it is. And I already have it. So this is the night that it happened where I actually lost my virginity. So after the football game, they came down to my aunt's house because at the time we were staying with my aunt. And nobody was home. Nobody was home at all. So since nobody was home, of course, a nigga going to sweet talk you out your draw. And again, I'm 11. That's true. Some guys would do that. Some boys, because it's still a boy. A 17, 18 year old, that's still a boy. They will sweet talk you. They will just tell you, you're beautiful, this, doing that, just for you to spread your legs. Please, young girls are watching this, and our parents are watching this, please, just beware. What's going on, guys? You already know it's your boy, M to the A to the C to the K-A-Y vibes. I know y'all be saying that with me. I'm back again with another video. This time around, we're going to be reacting to a video of a 12-year-old that got pregnant. 12-year-old mm. getting pregnant. Can you just imagine? You have a daughter who's 12-year-old, and then you realize she's pregnant. What would you do? Let me know in the comments. It's crazy. Let's get to the video. But before we go any further, please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. This world is crazy, man. What some boys, or like say some teenage boys are doing to our girls these days, it's just sad. So this is story time on how I end up pregnant and a mother at 12. So my mom sent us to South Carolina um, for the summer, which we actually end up staying longer. And my aunt was introducing me to everybody, like her in-laws and all. One of her in-laws is like 17. I want to say he was like 16 at the time. He caught my attention. At the time, I was hanging around people that was older than me. I did not look like I was 11. So my aunt was introducing me. And it's true, there's some girls out here now, like they're 12, 13, 14, and you won't, you won't be able to tell that they're that age, man. They look like, they look 20, 21, to be honest. That's why you got to ask for IDs, man. You don't want to get yourself in trouble as a guy. You have to ask for the ID, you know, to see the age, to be sure that she's that age. You don't want to, you know, get yourself involved in, in a mess, man. You don't want to do that. Because a lot of these girls out here, they, they have TDs, everything, you know, everything is out. You won't be able to tell that they, they are young, 13, 14. There was a time I did a public interview and there was, I don't know if you guys remember that public interview I did. There was this girl that told me she was 13. She didn't look 13 at all. She looked like she was 18, 19. That's why it's always good to be careful. Sometimes looks can be deceiving. To everybody when we came down here for the summer. And mind you, I have one older brother and two younger brothers and everybody's older than me and I grew up with nothing but boys and some girls. My older cousin, she was about 17, 18 at the time. She told me that I need to be in a child's place and stay away from teen boys. I didn't think nothing of it, so I was hanging around with everybody. But again, y'all, this one boy caught my attention. He was, at the time, I thought this boy was fine, bad to the bone. I'm running out of time. Like Okay, y'all, part two. So after my aunt finished introducing us, they told us all to go play outside. I'm a tomboy. Again, I grew up with nothing but boys. So at the end of the day, I was playing outside with them. Then we started playing hide and go get it. I did not know what the f that was. Okay. I did I not know. Go get it. So we playing hide, hide and go, go get, get it. it. And I just so end up happen to be with him. So he's helping me through the neighborhood while we're playing because it was a big ass neighborhood. And then we ended up back in my aunt's house. Now, this is the part when they start, we start talking to each other and asking like actual questions like how old we were and all of that. Now, we started going over our ages. I told everybody that I was 10 turning 11. So it's not like people did not know how old I was. But again, y'all, I told y'all I did not look my age. I looked older. And then he was just telling me how pretty I was, how cute I am, this, that, and the third. I was fine, this, that, and the third. And me being 10, I did not know exactly what that meant. Okay, y'all, I am running out of time. Okay, I'm so part three. So now we're talking about how pretty I am or whatever the case may be. And now at this moment, we're hanging out even more. I'm hanging around them even more because my mother done lied about us being in South Carolina only for the summer. It ended up being for the damn school year. So now here I am entering the fifth grade. Just started my period and all. My mother talking to me, letting me know about period, being pregnant, boys, all this stuff like that. So I'm just listening to my mom like, nope, I'm not getting pregnant. I'm not having a I'm not doing none of that. Can't nobody talk me into doing that, okay? But again, y'all, I liked it, this boy so bad. So here I am hanging around them now all the time because now I live in South Carolina and I'm going to school in South Carolina and I'm seeing them all the time. Going to football games, basketball games, everything. So now, this is the night that it happened. So he had a football game 
And of course, because in my head, that was my man, I went to the football game. And let me tell y'all something real quick. Public service announcement. This man was claimed to be my man because we were already together. Okay, y'all, part four. So this is the night that it happened where I actually lost my virginity. So after the football game, they came down to my aunt's house because at the time we were staying with my aunt. And nobody was home. Nobody was home at all. So since nobody was home, of course, a nigga going to sweet talk you out your draw. And again, I'm 11. That's true. Some guys would do that. Some boys, because it's still a boy. A 17, 18 year old. That's still a boy. They will sweet talk you. They will just tell you, you're beautiful, this, doing that, just for you to spread your legs. Please, young girls are watching this, and our parents are watching this, please, just beware. Some of these boys, they can be they can be very terrible sometimes, man. They can be evil. Let me just put it that way. Just because you're just trying to, you're just trying to bust, and then you're sleeping with an 11-year-old girl. 10 going on 11. That's crazy, man. They will tell you all this, hey, we're fine, girl. you're very, very on the storm. You're beautiful. I have a nice shape. They will put all that stuff in your head. Think, ah, and then you think, oh, yeah, I'm fine. And then she even said it. She said the guy was fine. She liked him. He was fine. That, like they always said, she liked him. She liked him. <laughs> I don't know why they were saying it. It's liked. It was liked it. So, mind you, we've already been kissing and whatever the case may be. So now we're kissing and touching and whatever the case may be. And now it's time to do the do. Of course, me being me, I was scared as f but I'm like, at the end of the day, I like this boy. And I was told by the boy, if you love me, you would do it. The worst mistake I did, I ever did, okay? So now he said that, and I'm like, damn, I love this boy, so let me go ahead and do it. So we ended up doing it. This was the first time ever that I did the nasty. No protection, no none of that. So we didn't use protection, and you know, in my head, I'm like, if I'm on my period, I can't get pregnant, and that's what it was. So now at this point, we're having Part okay, y'all, part five. So now at this moment, I'm having sex with this person constantly because in my mind, this is my man. So now fast forward to November, I'm getting thick. And y'all, when I say I'm getting thick, like my boobs are growing bigger than what it is. My butt is growing bigger than what it is. And I already have it. So now he's looking at me. He's like, what are we going to do with that? I'm like, what do you mean? So I started to notice I'm sleeping more when I get home from school. Like I'll do my homework and I'll go straight to sleep. And my mama started to notice something was wrong. So y'all, I had a little pudge or whatever kiss me be, which I'm not known to have a pudge. So my mama looked at me. She was like, mm, something ain't right. Let me check you. So my mama laid me on the bed and checked me down there, literally. And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you checking me? What's going on? So this is a constant thing. We're having I'm being sleepy. My mama checking me, whatever case may be. So now we get to my birthday, which is in January. Okay, y'all, I'll post part six in the morning. Y'all ready for part six? Okay, y'all, so now fast forward to my birthday. My mom, me and my mom got the same birthday, um, and we took a picture together. My mom sent the picture to my aunt in New York. My aunt in New York was like, mm-mm, something don't look right. Kiara is getting bigger, and I'm never big. So then my aunt in New York was like, y'all need to go get Kiara checked. She look pregnant, and if y'all don't get her checked, I'm calling DSS. So, mm. that was the 7th of January. Fast forward to the 27th. My mother called me off the bus on the 27th, my full government name, in front of everybody in the front of the neighborhood. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, chill, you embarrassing me. What's going on? She took me to the hospital. And she was like, we're going to get this test done so that way we can prove everybody wrong. A few hours go by. The doctor said, Mom, good news is she ain't got no STD. Bad news is your daughter's pregnant. Ooh. I'll post part seven. I'm sorry, y'all. Here's part seven. Hmm. So now my mama in the hospital flipping shit. She calls my dad to let him know that I am pregnant. Of course, he's crying and doing the most, as he should as a father. But then now my mother is asking me, who is it? Who are you sleeping with? Who is the father? I try to keep it in as long as possible. Then I just broke down and started crying even harder and told her who it was. So then we went to his house where him and his parents lived. And my mother's telling his mother and his father, like, listen, your, your son got my daughter pregnant. Level and going he on burst out in tears. His mom almost threw him out the window. My mother ended up calling my aunt down here. And because my aunt was pregnant as a teen, she flipped. So I'm sitting in a chair. She literally jacks me up. And my family's like, why did you do it? Why did you have And I'm like, because I wanted to try it. Everybody else was doing it. I had an itch. That's what I said. I'm running out of time. Part eight coming. I told y'all I was coming back with part eight. 
So after everybody found out that I was having sex with him, and now that's gonna be my baby daddy, my mama was like, "Hell no, she ain't this having long. this damn baby." His family was like that too. So my mom was like, we gonna need to do what we have to do so that way we can go ahead and get her this abortion. So everybody know January, in the January tax time comes, right? So my mom was waiting on her paperwork to come in and she went to go file her tax. So my mom took me to mm. doctor's care, if anybody know what that is, just to see how far along I was. Doctor care took blood and they was like, okay, she's only three and a half to four weeks pregnant. Okay, cool. But now my mama Texas didn't come in on time. So now we have to wait two more weeks. So that would make me six weeks. So we're waiting on, you know, her taxes to come in. And then they finally came in. Okay. I'm running out of time. Yeah. Okay. Part nine. So her taxes finally came in and I did not go to school. So she told me we was going to Georgia. And I'm like, okay, why are we going to Georgia? She was like, so you can have this the abortion. This is a long video. So in my man. head, I'm like, why? We just can't do it in South Carolina. And she was just like, you know, certain amount of weeks, you have to do it. This is a long video, but we have to, you know, we have to react to this because people have to learn from this. Especially our young girls, they need to learn. They need to be, you know, we need to create that awareness so they don't fall victim. Because there are a lot of girls out here, young girls getting pregnant. Because they, they don't, they're not being, they're not being guided or right. They're not being guided right. And all these boys, these teenage boys are taking advantage of them. Even there's some grown men that take advantage of these young girls. Out of state. So now, me, his mama, his daddy, his aunt, and my mama going to Georgia. So we cruising to Georgia, and now we get to the abortion clinic. So the lady is like, you know, how are you doing? How many weeks are you? Now, at this time, I'm six weeks. Six weeks. So now, you know, we're going over everything, and she's talking to me about how to process. So she lays me on the table. And my mother is standing beside. Me. So the girl lays me on the table and she has the vaginal ultrasound. So she goes to stick the vaginal ultrasound inside of me. And then once she stuck the vaginal ultrasound inside of me, hmm. Okay, y'all, part 10. So now she's sticking the vaginal um, ultrasound inside of me. And of course, I'm hurting. So she takes it out and she was like, I know it feels uncomfortable. We're going to do it a different way. So now she gets the other ultrasound, you know, if you're, if you have been pregnant, they put it on your stomach. So she goes to putting it on my stomach and she like pressing hard down mm -hmm. too, trying to, you know, measure the baby, see, um, like hear the heart beating on. Then she goes and say, uh oh. And I was like, uh oh, what? She was like, nothing, mom. I'm going to go ahead and, um, double check before I tell you anything. So she get the double checking and she getting writing stuff down. And I'm looking at her and I'm looking at my mom. My mom looking at me and, you know, we looking at each other. She was like, mom, she's not going to be able to get this abortion. And my mom was like, well, why the hell not? She, she said, because your daughter is five and a half months pregnant. I was like, oh, hell. Part 11. So now my mom is hella pissed and I'm boo crying. Then I get up, you know, fix myself and go out the room. And my mom's coming behind me. Then his dad sees me storming out the building and he comes and hugs me. And I just start crying even harder. And he was like, what? What happened? You don't want to tell me right now? And I'm just shaking my head like, no, I'll tell you later. I don't want to talk about it. So now we have to drive back to Columbia. And we get back to Columbia, but instead of them dropping us off home, they took us to their house. And they're like... Well, we need to figure out what we're going to do with the baby. And I'm just crying. I kept saying, I don't want the baby. I'm too young. I don't want a baby right now. Then they asked him what he think. He's looking at me like, I want to keep my baby. I got to come back for part 12. I said 12. part 12. So now that we are at the house and discussing everything that's going on with the baby, I decided to tell them I'd rather give my baby up for adoption. Hmm. I don't want her to be around my mom who's an alcoholic. And once I mentioned the reasons why, he was just like, no, I'm going to be there for my baby. I'm going to take care of my baby. Doing all this extraness. Mm. And I'm just like, at the end of the day, this is about me. This is not about you. I don't want my baby in a family. No. Nowhere around here. No. So now he's basically trying to plead his case. Him and his people trying to plead his case about why I should keep the baby.
So my mother was like, at the end of the day, I already tried to make her have an abortion. I'm going to leave this up to her. So my mother was like, we can go home. You can think about it because I don't want this stressing you out. So we left and I went home and I just cried my eyes out. Y'all are so hilarious. But yeah, here's part 13. So now, of course, you know, I've been thinking about it. It's been several months I've been thinking about it. My due date mm. is May 17th. So I'm like, at this moment, I got to make a decision for real. For Part me. 13. So, you know, me and him conversate on the phone on what we wanted to name our child. He wanted to name Raven. And I was just like, okay. But ultimately, it's still my decision since I'm the mother. And then me being in love with him. I was in my head. I was like, "Damn! If I do keep this baby, me and him can be together. We can raise this baby together. Whatever the case may be." Then my father got involved, and I'm the only girl. And when I tell you the definition of a daddy's girl, that was me. My father was not playing none of that. My father was like, "You're not going to impregnate my daughter. She's only 12, and now you talking about you want to raise a baby with her?" Mm -hmm. All I know is my dad hired a private investigator, mm -hmm. and it went downhill from there. Okay, y'all, so part 14. So, like I said, my dad hired a private investigator. And at this point, I'm being homeschooled. So, that was, what, the second semester of my sixth grade year? So, the private investigator comes to my house and introducing himself. And he lets me know, like, yeah, serious. I spoke with your father in New York. And he told me about the situation. Now, he's wanting me to elaborate. Now, the private investigator is telling me how it all works or whatever the case may be. Then, he goes and showed me pictures. And now the pictures he showed me was of my daughter's dad and some other boys and even his brother. So now the private mm. investigator is like, okay, so your dad told me the situation. I need you to let me know which one of these are the people that you slept with. And I'm like, and if I tell you, is he going to get in trouble? He was like, no, he's not going to get in trouble, but you should still tell the truth. I was hesitant, but I was like, it's the private investigator. So I picked his picture to let him know. Part 15. So the private investigator took the nose down and then left my house. I want to say it was like a week or two later. My mother gets a call from his parents, I want to say, saying that police just went to the school. We almost done, y'all. And they Long arrested one. him. So <clears throat> now here I am again in love with this boy crying like, no, like what did my dad do? He done messed up my chances God. of being with him. It was a lot. And then my mother was like, okay, I need to call your father so we can see what's the plan. So now the private investigator is, you know, talking mm. to my mom, talking to me, and talking to my dad. Man, this and is crazy, And they let yo. us know, like, okay, you know, we did arrest him. And I want to say he was, like, in 10th or 11th grade. And this whole time, we're still in communication with... Man, this is a crazy story, yo. This We need to learn from this. Because you just never know. You might have a, 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 a daughter in the future anytime soon whatever the case may be, and you always want to be aware of stuff like this. You want to make your daughter know that when boys, you just don't get pregnant at that time. Don't, don't even think of anything that, that has to do with X S E X. you know that word. 12 years old is too young, man. You should still be in school. Get your education. The P.I. And did I mention it had to be like a few weeks before my due date, part 16. So now here he is arrested. And, of course, I'm pregnant as hell. And prior to this, my mother had conversated with my dad. Y'all, when I tell y'all this, please don't go in. I did not want him to be in jail. My mother also did not want him to be in jail. Mm -hmm. My mother was like, at the end of the day, you know, he was 16 turning 17 when we were sexually active. But he was already mm -hmm. 17 when we found that I was pregnant. And she was like, he cannot do nothing for his child behind bars. So why are we locking him up? And then because he was 17, my mother was like, he's also a child. She did not agree with what he did. But taking him out, his child's life was not sitting well with her. So again, a few weeks before I gave birth, my mother did help him with posting money to his bill. Now, he may say otherwise, but my mother did help. And then, of course, y'all, he got out. And now it's getting close okay, to part late. 17. So now he gets out of jail. And when he gets out of jail... It's about the time for me to go into labor. So now I'm in labor and it's his aunt, my mom, and then mm. one of my friend's mom was there. My friend's mom didn't stay, but it was just my mom and his aunt. 
So now it's time to push. My mom's holding my leg on one side. His aunt's holding my leg on the other side. So I done pushed my baby out after being snipped down there because I was too small. And then, of course, my mother cut the umbilical cord. Now, y'all, remember I said he went to jail. His charges were criminal sexual conduct with minors, second degree. Being though that my father pressed charges on him, we could not be in the same room and could not see each other. So while I was delivering my baby, he was not there. But he did come up to the hospital after I gave birth. Again, we could not see each other, so they had to close the curtain. Now, here's the part where I made the decision to keep my baby. Because, of course, I didn't talk about 18. So after he comes to the hospital and he sees my baby, I decided to keep my baby. Now, I didn't decide to keep my baby because he was there. I had decided to keep my baby while I was pushing and my mom cut the umbilical cord and they put my baby on me. I just couldn't fathom the thought of me carrying a child for nine months and then giving her up for adoption after I didn't give her life. And of course, I was just so emotional. So I told my mom, I said, mom, I can't do it. I want to keep my baby. She was mm. like, that's a hard pill to swallow, but it was my decision because I'm the mother. So now it comes to the part where we're naming the baby. Again, he wasn't there. He had to leave because we couldn't see each other and his peoples wasn't there after that. It was just me and my mom. But his people wanted to know if I was giving my child their last name. I was thinking, for what? Mm. What do I need to give her y'all last name for? So I told my mom to tell them she's not getting their last name and she was getting my last right. name. And again, I'm 12. Y'all, this is part 19. So like I said, I did not give my hmm. child their last name. So I came up with my baby's name. I named her myself. I gave her my maiden name and all. I wasn't no stupid little girl now. About my baby, no. She not just about to have her dad's last name just because you done helped me made her. Now I'm like, you got to show me why she needs your last name. Remember earlier when I was like, he wanted me to keep her? So now she's kept. So now, you know, it's a few days in the hospital. They calling up there trying to check on her or whatever the case may be. We tell them she's doing fine. Yes, and then, of course, a few days go by and then they discharge me. So now here I am, just gave birth, 12 years old, recovering because I got stitches down there. And now his family and everybody want to come down to my house to see the baby. Mm. Of course, me being me, I didn't have no problems because I'm like, that's her side of the family too. So, of course, they can come see her. Y'all, this is crazy. Man, I guess that was the end of the video. Whew. It was a long video, but like I said, I hope you guys learned one or two things from this video so far. What I'm just going to say is, like, as parents, we need to keep watching our kids, man. And always make sure, tell them the right things they're supposed to imbibe. Let me just put it that way. Give them lessons on boys, especially our, our girl child. If you bring them up with good morals, they will grow up with the, the, those morals and they won't depart from it. Please be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, make sure you share this video so it can go viral, you know, so it can create awareness. And, uh, yeah. And also follow me on Instagram. You're going to see my name over there, my K Vibe. So follow me on Instagram. Send me videos you'll love me to react to. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.